and ambient diffuse and specular components can each contribute to the final color of the pixel. So we may decide that this will be our final color and we want to combine it uh, with some different color like this uh, with some levels of red green and blue so we can just add these two together and multiply the color vector by some level of intensity so this becomes the final color obviously when adding two vectors each component is added and each component may exceed the level of one but open gl hardware clamps each color component into the range from 0 to 1. So this itself is not causing any harm to the program execution. Rather, it may cause some unpleasant visual effects like overlit blinding areas on the screen. These are light component types we already discussed. Uh, ambient prevents unlit areas from being too dark. Diffuse would be the closest to the idea of some sort of material like steel or cloth or paper and so on. And specular would emphasize the smooth surface that reflects the light itself causing specks on the object. And uh, sometimes you may want some extra glowing, uh, the emission of light by the object itself. That's fine, you can always easily combine it with an ambient light levels. Diffuse lighting is also known as Lambertian reflectance. Lambertian diffuse reflection model proposes a formula to compute the intensity of the reflected light. And of course, we have to do this for every pixel or every fragment in our fragment shader. And uh, this model is good for rough surfaces or pretty much any surface that represents some sort of consistent material. And so the core idea of the model is that the light falling on the surface appears the same regardless of the observer's viewpoint. So this is the source of light, okay, and this is a pixel on the surface. So regardless where the camera position is, so our observer of the scene could be located right here and look down this way, or they could be standing right here and looking down this way. Regardless, the intensity of this reflection from the surface will be exactly the same for each position of the viewpoint. Diffuse light is simply a cosine between the vector pointing towards the light and the normal vector uh, to the surface. Let's open this image and zoom in a little bit. Vector L is called the incoming light vector, and vector N, of course, is the normal of the plane. And note that the lighting direction of vector L is pointing from the surface towards the light. So normally you think about modeling a light, like um, deciding where the light source is, and uh, that would be the direction of the light. But when doing this computation of diffuse lighting, you just take the opposite direction. Also, another term that this angle here uh, between the surface normal and the light source vector is called the angle of incidence of light. If vectors uh, L and N are normalized, which means they're one unit size, then dot product of these two vectors gives us the cosine of this angle and of course this cosine will be a scalar value so it's not no longer a vector and uh, we can take some sort of base diffuse component color and multiply it by this intensity and this will be our implementation of Lambertian reflectance So in summary, dot product of these two vectors gives us the cosine of the angle of incidence. 
uh, then we can use it as the level of intensity for some sort of base intensity that we choose for our material of the surface and in practice you typically take the dot product which can be a negative value in case of the light source moving under the surface right so if this angle becomes more than 90 degrees like this because the light source is located somewhere here in that case we just don't want to use this light to add to any illumination of our pixels on this specific surface in that case it's just practical idea to take the dot product and clamp it into the range from 0 to 1 which means that we would like to discard any negative values and use the maximum function to choose between the cosine and zero and this is also a very nice opportunity to add the ambient light into the same formula basically instead of using the zero right here we can just use the ambient light intensity that we already chosen so this formula here becomes uh, one of the recipes that you can use uh, you can try to tweak a different way you can even try to use this intensity over here and see what kind of performance that gives you uh, but overall these are the ideas that the dot product controls the intensity of the diffuse lighting